Welcome to this tutorial brought to you by River City Graphics. Today I'm going to be showing you how to create a simple watermark in Photoshop. So to get started we're going to open up Photoshop and this is the image we have here today to be watermarked. So the first step in creating this watermark is to go over and select your text tool. Now you're going to want to select a font style of something that's kind of a bigger thicker font. Um, so I chose impact for that. And then you want to choose a font size that's appropriate for the resolution of your image. So I chose 200. And then you also want to take it and you want to make sure that the font color is white. So it's all F's in the hex code. So we'll click OK. And now we're ready to get started typing. So I'm just going to type copyright rivercitygraphics.com for the watermark of this image. So we're just going to click and then in order to get the copyright symbol, I'm going to take and I'm going to hold alt and I'm going to press 0169. And then when I release the alt button, you can see the copyright symbol appears right there. So then I'm just going to do space rivercitygraphics.com. So now we have a pretty nice start to our watermark. So I'm just going to click the check to uh, set those options. And then what we're going to do uh, next is actually take and lower this down because we don't want uh, this white, straight white. Uh, it's If you've seen watermarks before, they're more of an opaque, um, see-through uh, object. So we're going to take and we're going to go over to opacity. I'm just going to set this to 50. So you can see that we can see through this pretty well and we can still see the image underneath it as not quite as obnoxious. So um, the only problem comes when we take and we can drag this around. You can see it everywhere except down here in this gravel. If you move it down into the gravel or if, say you have a lighter image and the, um, the watermark just ends up being on that lighter part of the image, then it's not really going to protect your image anymore because it's hardly noticeable. So what you want to do uh, to get around this is add a drop shadow. So I'm just going to go to the FX button over here and it's going to go off screen, but you can click uh, drop shadow right there and it'll bring up this box. And what you want to do is you want to take with these options and I'm just going to leave this on 75. Uh, we'll leave the distance at five. We're going to put the spread at somewhere around nine or 10 and then the size around like 38 or 40. Now again, these might change depending on the size of your text. So I'm just going to click okay. And now you can see that there's a drop shadow around the text. So you can see the before and after of that. And now if I take this and drag it down to where the gravel is, you can see this really well over the top. If you, if I turn that off, you can see what it was and now what it is. So basically you could take this and put this on a white image and you'd still be able to see the watermark. So having it to where you can see it on dark and light images is really important when it comes to um, batch processing, especially for your watermark if you want to go through and put this on 100 or 200 images at a time, um, you don't really set specifically where it's going to end up. You know it's going to be in the center, but you don't know if it's going to be on dark or light. So um, it's important that you create a watermark that can work well on dark and light images. So the last thing that we need to do uh, with this is I'm just going to take and drop down uh, the fill to 50% on that layer. And you can see that that's dropped it down even further so it's even more uh, see-through and it's less um, noticeable but it definitely protects your image uh, from being taken and used without giving you any recognition. So uh, I hope you guys learned something in this tutorial. Um, if you want to know more about batch processing and taking and putting this watermark on hundreds of tutorials, I have a actions uh, and batch processing tutorial if you want to check that out. Um, that combined with this could be very time saving for you. So I hope you guys learned something. Uh, don't forget to subscribe, rate, and comment and I will see you in the next tutorial. Thanks for watching.